Hey everyone, so as you can tell by the title, I have a job tomorrow and it was all because of YouTube. Yeah, so I'll go into that with you guys in a little bit, but for right now, I'll do a little gear breakdown on what I'm doing tomorrow and what I'm bringing. But I'll tell you guys about how I got the job here in a little bit. So first I'll show you guys some new equipment that I picked up. I picked up some Nanlite uh, Pavo tubes. Uh, these are the first generation, the 30C Mark II. I have uh, two of them in here, but um, yeah, someone I know um, was getting rid of them here locally. And I thought, why not pick them up? Can never have enough tube lights and he was uh, selling them for a really good price almost like just giving them away at that point so i appreciate that i have the two light kits in here and he was also selling a atomo shinobi monitor with like a bunch of accessories came with this um this arm and then a battery kit and all that stuff um and it was in good condition so i picked that up and I also uh, purchased with my own money a new um, gimbal. This is the, the Zhiyun or Zhiyun or however you say that. Um, Weeble version 3S, I believe. And it's a really compact gimbal compared to my last setup. There's lots of things I like about it. So I'll probably do a video breakdown on this guy. I'll do a future video comparing this guy to my other gimbal and whatnot and all the things that I like about it. So look out for that. If you're not subscribed, feel free to subscribe. And I picked up this little guy. I don't know about you guys, but I go on Amazon a lot and just browse at all the different cool little gadgets and this one really caught my eye but it it's literally a portable fan i think it's it's not a um venti fan i know that's kind of like the more popular one that one's like 70 or 80 bucks but this one was like 30 and i mean for a fan it does a really good job it just has like three modes um one two and three and it's battery powered and all that. Um, so yeah, it was like 30 bucks. I'll put the link in the description and it goes up really tall. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. And it's weighted kind of at the bottom. So it doesn't feel like it's gonna tip over too bad. Maybe in high wind, it would probably tip over. But yeah, the battery, it's built in battery so it doesn't need a cable. You can plug it in USB-C. But yeah, I've used it a few times so far and it's worked really well, especially in these hot Arkansas days. It's definitely come in handy. So that's something else I picked up. So that's about it. I think that's, that's all the new stuff I got last week. Pavo tubes, Shinobi monitor, new gimbal, fan, just some of the necessities, I guess. But so I have a shoot tomorrow, very full day, nine to five type thing. And I'm trying to fit everything in on just one cart. So that way I don't have to make multiple trips or whatnot, but I have two camera packages down below already built Sony FX3s. One 600D unit uh, aperture light here in the middle shelf. I have um, two tripods in the middle and then two um, uh, light stands on each side. So one on this side and then one on this side. And they're light stands, um, the Matthews versions. They're aluminum, kind of lightweight, but they'll do the trick. And then I got a bunch of batteries. Try not to use any wall power for cameras or anything, just to minimize cables. Gimbal package. I have a slate, 
probably won't bring these guys with me. I don't think I'll need them. I do already have some aperture tube lights and I already have one at the bottom, a two foot aperture light. I have a boom pole, a boom pole holder. And then this is for the tube light, bunch of cables, and I'll probably throw a C-stand um, on the end of this innovative cart here. Okay, got the car packed and washed. Always good to have a clean car. Still have a tiny little chip, but it's much better than it was for my last road trip. I don't think it's gonna spread, so that's good. But if it does, I'll have to get it replaced. So I made it here to location and I'm getting everything unloaded, I'm trying a little bit of a different format here with a kind of a POV point of view look. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Sorry for the loud breathing. The actual camera is right on my chest, so I might try and put it above my head, maybe like on a hat or something next time. I'm just using a little Insta camera that just clips onto my chest. But yeah, let me know if you guys are liking that kind of format. I know for me, I like seeing the whole process. So you guys saw me, you know, bring out my cart and get everything set in real time. But yeah, just let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, if you like this kind of style, I might try and incorporate it a little bit more so you guys can see even more behind the scenes. But yeah, so now I'm going into location. I already went in before I brought any equipment and met with the client, you know, introductions and kind of uh, scope of the project and what we're doing for the day. Spent about 20 minutes kind of going over that. And I found a location that I could store a lot of my equipment. So that's what I'm doing now. But yeah, this job came to me kind of out of the blue. 
I got a text from a fellow YouTuber, Peter, that I met up with a, a few weeks back um, in Houston, Texas. But he texted me with a with a job that he needed me to cover up in Arkansas, and he gave me some uh, some details and whatnot. And he connected me with the agency and everything, and I was able to make it happen and and able to take the shoot. And that just goes to show you the the power of networking and ultimately starting this YouTube channel. I mean, when I originally started the YouTube channel earlier this year, I wasn't really expecting much out of it. You know, maybe connecting with a few people because I do live in a pretty small town. Um, so I was trying to branch out a little bit and maybe connect with, with people, you know, more locally uh, out of my network that sort of thing, but it just goes to show you the power of YouTube and, and putting yourself out there that I was able to meet up with someone in a different state. And it ultimately led to me getting this job strictly just from YouTube. I probably never would have been able to connect with Peter outside of YouTube just because of our location. We're just far apart, but, you know, being able to connect online and then meet up and then it led to me getting a job, I think is a very powerful tool to have. So definitely, I feel like networking in this industry is huge and being able to go outside of your your scope and location and network with people all over the state, you never know what it could lead to. So a huge shout out to Peter for hooking me up with this gig and I definitely appreciate it man and looking forward to connecting in the future for sure. So the actual job was with a dental facility here in Hot Springs, Arkansas and and I was doing photo and video uh, for the whole day. Uh, pretty long schedule but the people here were awesome to work with, super nice, and it made the day go by really quick. But the first half of the day, we were doing strictly photos, and then the second half, we were going to do interviews with patients and doctors and some uh, typical B-roll around those interviews. I had a 600D on a C-stand with a lantern attachment, and that's what I was using as kind of my, my lighting source for the whole day. I would just kind of put that on a C stand and it would cover a wide area at a hundred percent. I was able to really light up a big room. So that was kind of what we worked with the whole day for photo and for video. I never really uh, use strobes or anything like that. I, I just don't have a lot of experience when it comes to studio photography. I mostly like using continuous sources. So that's why I was using the 600D to just kind of light up the room and then I can shoot whatever angle I, I really need. So that worked out great and I was able to capture some really good images. Where's a good place to get some power? Like on one of the outlets, um, uh, nearest outlet or something? I see one right here. I can probably stretch there. Okay. Yeah, you have to do that. yeah, that's no problem. Okay. 
Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. Okay, we'll try that. I'm gonna grab my camera and I'll be right back. But the new gimbal worked perfectly, exactly what I wanted. It was super lightweight. I did add a monitor to it just to have a, a little bit bigger of a screen. Yeah, I think but it was exactly what I was wanting. My other gimbal was just so heavy. And I'll go over that in another video. But yeah, I'm very pleased with this gimbal. It was super lightweight. And I felt like I could operate it all day comfortably. And that's what really matters when, you, when you're working with a gimbal is sometimes a bigger setup. I feel like I'm not getting the shots that I need just because it's too cumbersome. With this guy, I could literally just go anywhere and the setup was just very minimal. Okay, now do you have a spot where you work from, like computer um, sort of thing? Or you probably move around quite a bit, right? Yeah, I mean, all the computers that I use are probably in the operatory. So okay. I don't know if that's... So we could just kind of pick one? Yeah, we can just pick one. I'm going to turn it around. Yeah. Let's see. Let's do this one in the middle. And as far as camera settings, I was using obviously the two Sony FX3s. The client wanted a more final color. They weren't going to do a ton of color treatment. So I filmed everything in S-Cine tone. And I know that that's a little bit different from how I normally do it with S-Log3. So I had to look up, you know, just to make sure... I was capturing it at the right native ISO. Normally with S-Log3, I think you can go up to the second native ISO 12,800 and it's super clean. But with, with S-Cine tone, I believe the native ISOs are a little bit noisy on that profile. I think it's 400 ISO and then 2000 ISO on kind of the sweet spots for the least amount of noise. And correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. That's just what I read online. So that's what I tried to stick to on these interviews. I had the camera set to 2000 ISO. And from what I can see, the images look pretty clean. So I'm glad I read up on that before filming on a new profile that I'm not 100% used to. I mostly shoot everything in S-Log3 and then color treat it later. Because we were moving around so much, I opted for a very minimal lighting setup. I just had the 600D as kind of a key light, and I, I was trying to point it up to hit the ceiling uh, just to make it a little bit less sourcey. Sometimes if I had the light directed at the talent, even through diffusion, I just feel like the image looks a little bit more sourcey. So I opted to have the lantern point up so that way it would hopefully kind of distribute the light in a more natural looking way. And I think it looked pretty decent. Probably only took me about 20, 30 minutes to get everything set up. 
so I knew I couldn't really do too much with the lighting. Obviously, there's a hundred other things that I could have done and wanted to do, but you really have to work within the, the amount of time given, and there was already a pretty tight call sheet with this job, so I was just trying to make sure everything looked decent and then just kind of rolled with the call sheet. So the overall experience was really great working with the agency and working with this client. We were able to get a lot of great content and I'm excited to see it all come together. And I appreciate you guys watching the video and subscribing and commenting. Thank you guys so much for all the support and I'll catch you in the next one.